I think Pani Puri today tastes worse than Pani Puri from 10 years ago. And I can explain this with physics. The Pani Puri you have today will probably look like this. And the one from 5 to 10 years ago looked like this. On the face of it, the new one looks more consistently puffed up, is of the same size and has even thickness that lets you break it to add the stuffing without damaging the whole puri. With the old puri, it was a lottery. Sometimes it won't have enough puffing to hold the pani and many times it'll just completely break apart only to get repurposed for bhel puri and so on. Well, it's not surprising. Modern day puris are made by machines which ensure consistency. Till very recently, puris tended to be handmade. If you watch this video from the brilliant Bong Eats channel, where they use the older method. And by the way, Kolkata makes the best pani puris. Fuchkas, they call them. They use two parts atta, one part suji and baking soda plus kneading and fry. The modern day puri uses two parts atta, one part maida and one part suji and has one additional step. The dough is cooked in hot water before being kneaded. This gelatinizes the starch, which makes it less porous to steam. So when you fry the puri, the steam has no escape. The puri puffs up more fully and consistently. While the older recipe has more atta by ratio and thus the extra bran and fiber plus uncooked starch creates uneven puffing. So you will see blisters and so on. And here is the thing. Texture is a big part of the flavor experience. When you put one of those older puris in your mouth, you have no idea what the texture is going to be. Each puri is unique. Some extra puffed, some less so. Some with blisters, some with odd shapes. The sheer anticipation of that random lottery adds to the charm of the pani puri experience. In the modern puri, all the experience is from the quality of the pani and stuffing. The puri is just uniform and predictable. As you eat an old pani puri, you get hints of toasted bran from the atta, followed by the filling, followed by the crunch from the blisters. This noise keeps the palate engaged, preventing sensory fatigue. This is why rustic or artisan foods often rate higher in palatability tests, despite being technically imperfect. Sometimes being surprised is good for you.